And let's see. Chris, the college football week 12 off the radar pick 'em. And I don't know how off the radar some of these games really are, but these are these are ones that I did not get a chance to discuss on the Bet US show. So, let's let's talk about what happened last week. I went 5, 6 and 1. Chris, you went 6, 5 and 1. The total on the season. Neither of us is is doing great here. I am 57 and 61 against the number. Chris, you are 50 and 68. But we do still have two weeks to go. And then, of course, championship week, Army Navy week, and our bowl game. So let's let's dive into pick number one here. And our first one will be Texas heading to West Virginia, 12 p.m. Eastern time. West Virginia, a three-point favorite, total of 56 and a half. Chris, West Virginia, five and two against the spread in their last seven games at home. Texas is, I mean, they lost to Kansas at home as, as a 30-point favorite last week. I don't know what to make of what's happening with the Longhorns right now. This appears to be uh, the purge, right? <laughs> I mean, I, there's is there any way that you could possibly bet on Texas this weekend? Well, no, I, I would not. I think this team is a one-trick pony, and that trick is B. John Robinson, who is out. And without him, there's no chance on earth I would take them. I don't think their defense is good enough to stop anybody. I do not think their offense is good enough without B. John to to do anything. We're going to see all of the uh, mental cleverness and and strategery of one Steve Sarkeesian, who everyone just assumes is this offensive god. And, 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 yeah. This is this is what he looks like playing with mere men, and, yes. and not not the elite men. I I agree with you. I'm I'm rolling West Virginia minus three. You are doing the same. I mean, it got ugly in Austin really quick, didn't it? <laughs> Just super ugly. Another 12 p.m. Eastern time game, and we are going to stay in the same conference here. Iowa State is heading to Oklahoma, and of course, the Sooners got embarrassed in Waco last week. Oklahoma, a three-and-a-half point favorite now. This line opened at four-and-a-half. It has been bet down a full point. Uh, total is 59. Iowa State is five-and-one against the spread in their last six against Oklahoma. And, you know, I when I look at this, Oklahoma last season lost two games in a row for the first time in, I mean, as, as far back as anybody that's alive can really remember. I... I don't know what to make of this. When I look at the numbers here, Iowa State's defense is like number 82 in efficiency over the last five weeks. They have just fallen off the grid. And while I do want to think that Matt Campbell has something up his sleeve and maybe last week against Texas Tech was was them like looking ahead to Oklahoma, I'd, I'd have to wonder if Oklahoma's going to show out here. I, that's the way that I'm going to lean on this. Like, obviously... These are not my official plays. You can go over to the Bet US show for for my official picks, the ones that I have full money on. But man, I think I'm going to roll Oklahoma here minus three and a half. Like, there's so much love for Iowa State this week. I just, I I think that they're going to come out and show something this week against Iowa State, and then next week is when they get bludgeoned. So I think you're right. By the way, on everything that you said, I, I can't imagine this Oklahoma team being that bad two weeks in a row, but the problem is is they've been that bad, I don't know, like five weeks in a row. True. They just happened to play teams that were dead and just couldn't couldn't fight at all. This Iowa State team, by the way, kind of looks like that throughout a lot of this season, and and it's just really hard to take them serious. But I think the reason they look like that last week, I said this already, is I think they were looking ahead to Oklahoma. I thought I think they could have slept walk through Texas Tech, but they thought Oklahoma was gettable. And I think, I think Matt Campbell knows he let this season get away from him. He let this season of an incredibly talented, incredibly experienced players <clears throat> get away from him. He can save it with a win over Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, so you were, I will, I will right. take Campbell and the boys. I will take the head start and hope for a field goal game. I would love for an upset. And that totally makes sense. All right, so I got you down for Iowa State plus three and a half. And I will roll with the Sooners here. Let's move on to the next one. And we have got Georgia Tech heading over to Notre Dame. 
And good gracious, what Brian Kelly has done with this team is nothing short of miraculous. It's a 2.30 p.m. Eastern time game. The Irish are 17.5 point favorites, total of 59.5. Georgia Tech 5-1 and one against Notre Dame in the last six matchups between the two. And man, when you look at advanced stats and whatnot on this game, I it's really hard to not take Notre Dame in this spot. Uh, advanced numbers would tell you that they should be favored by like 20 in this game. Instead, they're favored by 17 and a half. Uh, the number's actually gone up quite a bit. I There's something about Georgia Tech and their ability to fight and the fact that this line is all the way up at 17 and a half. I made the line 14, and it's all the way at 17 and a half. I think, I think Georgia Tech can hang around in this game. This is, I, I've told you multiple times, this is one of the most volatile teams out there. None of their advanced numbers said that they should be any good, but that's because they're not consistent. Do I think that they could go to Notre Dame Stadium and absolutely put up some kind of a fight? Absolutely. I, I certainly think that they could. I think they could feel like, okay, Notre Dame might be gettable. We know we're not going to beat Georgia next week. Like I, That's a weird way to look at this, I understand, because they could just be looking ahead to Georgia next week. But... I think they got some fight in them. I think they can hang within 17 and a half. So I'm going to take Georgia Tech here. So normally I don't like laying these big numbers at all, ever. But but I look, I haven't gotten a lot right this year. One thing I got right before the season started was the Notre Dame team is no joke. They are they are not some punk that are just going to lose a bunch of guys and roll over and die. They're going to fight like hell in every game. They're going to lose very few of them. I thought they'd lose the Cincinnati game. They did lose the Cincinnati game. They hadn't lost since. They hadn't trailed a bunch after that, after that also. So, like, they, they've they been handling everyone they need to handle. I, I think the Georgia Tech team is bad. I don't think they're very good at football at all. I, I think there's a world where this team might, might be quitting. They might be waving the red flag at the fourth quarter, and, and Notre Dame gets up by three, three scores. I, I could dig that. I could dig that. So I'll write down Notre Dame for you. Yeah, I'm I'm going to take the Yellow Jackets for whatever reason, and I'll probably be regretting that once we get to about uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. But uh, You just keep saying that they're a great team. They're a great, they're a great coach, and, and they, and they he's building something. Well, at the, you know, it's, it's three, four years now. At some point in time, you got to get the damn thing built. Yeah, it's been, it's been three seasons, so I – you know, yes, I, I think they got to get something done. They don't look done. any different in year three than they did in year one. <laughs> you ain't wrong about that. You're not wrong about that. Next game on the board, we got App State headed to Troy. This is our Sun Belt special this week. Troy, a 10-point underdog, and this line moved a little bit. Uh, it opened up at App, I believe, at minus 8.5, if, cra- if I'm not crazy. Double-check that. Yeah, I think it was App, minus 8.5. So, uh, so Troy, of course, a 10-point underdog at home. They have looked good recently. Like they, They're playing better. Uh, I think everybody knows that I'm not a big fan of the coaching style of one Chip Lindsley. But, uh, but instead, you know, Troy won five against the spread in their last five games as a home underdog of 10 points or less. This falls into that category. They just don't do well in these spots for whatever reason. They, they beat teams that, uh, that they are supposed to beat sometimes and they always lose to teams that they're supposed to lose to. But ever since that Coastal Carolina game, like, Troy has put up some fight, man. Like, they they look all right right now. They got Gunnar Watson back at quarterback. Uh, the offense still isn't good, but, but their defense has actually been okay. And against Chase Bryce in this App State offense, I think that he can slow them down enough and make App State uncomfortable to the point where, yeah, I think uh, I think Troy can actually hang within this ten points, especially at home on a Saturday or on a yeah on a Saturday. Yeah, I feel I feel good about this. I'm gonna take Troy plus the uh, plus the ten here. Okay, I kind of thought we were gonna go the opposite way here because because I knew your feelings on on Troy and, and the coaching staff. I like Troy too. I think it's too many points. I think App State is getting a lot of uniform credit and name credit. App State's a really good football team. It's not a slight on them. I don't think they're a ten point better than Troy on the road favorite. That's, That's it. Yeah. Uh, this is a math problem. That's all it is. Beating them by a touchdown still says you're a really good football team. But I think Troy's got some fight. I'm with you. I think Troy can win this game. I do, if too. If I think they can win the game, i got to take 10. I, I agree with you 100%. So, Troy plus 10 for both of us. And we are I, gonna... hey, I'll tell you this. This is, this is my logic for that. Okay. 
I'll be more surprised if App State wins by 20 than Troy winning the game outright. That's your 10-point difference in the spread. There you go. That's, that does make sense. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, we are going to ride a 3.30 p.m. Eastern time game, Nebraska, heading to Wisconsin. Look, Nebraska got an off week last week. Everybody, you know, they decided they're going to keep Scott Frost. What are we going to see out of, you know, the Cornhuskers this week heading to Wisconsin? Wisconsin is a nine-point favorite, total of 42. And, look, the Badgers, 5-0 and against the spread in their last five against the Big Ten. I... At these advanced numbers for them, they are unfreaking believable. Their EPA per play margin on defense is number one in the country. If you go just from week five, after they played Michigan, all the way through, Wisconsin has better defensive numbers than Georgia. Their defense is unbelievable, and they're not putting Graham Mertz in a position to fail. Like, I love the the adjustments that they have made to their offense. They realize they can't do some of the stuff that they were doing at the very beginning of the season because they're not equipped to do that. They swapped it around, and now they're on an absolute tear. Adrian Martinez against this defense is going to be something to watch out for. The Nebraska defense, I do think, is pretty good. I still trust Wisconsin to be able to run the ball on them. You, you look at these two teams... I really think that Wisconsin is going to be able to boat race them a little bit here. My number on this was actually Wisconsin minus 14. It's at nine. Like I, I'm going to take the Badgers. Yeah, you, you say boat race. I'm going to say ragdoll them. I think they're, I think they're just going to physically shake them until they don't want to play anymore. This, this is just one of those things where one team, I think, is bigger and stronger than the other and, and so big and so strong that they can kind of physically impose their will however they want. Yeah, that's that's the same way that I see this going. That's the same way that I see it going. Don't have notes for the rest of these, so let's go on and roll through the rest of uh, the rest of these ACC matchup. We have got Virginia heading to Pittsburgh and the Pitt Panthers, fourteen and a half point favorites, total of sixty six. They're saying that Virginia may not have Brennan Armstrong again. I don't know that I necessarily buy that, and that's really where this line is right now, right? If if Brennan plays, this line is going to drop, and it's going to drop very quickly on Saturday. If he doesn't play, this thing is probably going to shoot up to like 17 and a half, 18. Like, it's, it's right in between where we think it probably should be. If he doesn't play, there's just, there's no prayer here. If he does play, I actually had this at Virginia uh, plus nine, so like, I'm going to take my shot. I think he plays because I think they were holding him out of the Notre Dame game for him to play in the ACC games. These are the games that matter. Virginia still has a shot to, to go and represent their division, like in the ACC title game. So I'm, I'm going to take the who's here. Pitt is really good, but I think 14 and a half may just be a little bit too much, especially if Brennan Armstrong plays. Uh, I'm, a, I'm in complete agreement on that. He, I is there any reason for him to not? Do we really think he's that hurt? Uh, it's. I think it's just a broken rib thing, so it's mainly like a pain tolerance situation. It's a pain tolerance thing. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think he's going to play, and I'll take Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you're right, though. I think if he doesn't, if he doesn't play, that's a loser. I think that's a loser. <laughs> 100%. I think Pitt will beat them by at least three touchdowns and likely more if uh, if Armstrong didn't play. Well, um, I think Pitt's going to win the game anyway. Yeah. I, I just, I've just i seen teams hang with Pitt if they can score. Yes. And if Virginia's got him, he can, they should be able to score. Now, Now, if he plays hurt and Pitt get – now, their Pitt's defensive front hasn't been great. They haven't pressured the quarterbacks a lot. But this might be a game where early you send a couple of blitzes you don't normally send – trying to get home on one. Maybe you're willing to take a 15-yarder just to just to get him on the ground one or two times just to see if you hit him good. Does that take him out of the game? Because I'm going to say this. If he comes yeah. out, you know what? No. Give me, I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. Because I think at any point in time he gets removed from the game, that's not like the last four minutes. I think Pitt can score twice fast. That's, okay. that's what scares the hell out of me. If he, if he comes out of this game at any point in time and or doesn't play, I love Pitt, and I love Pitt in a row. I, that, it, too much volatility going on a guy that's hurt, which I think that guy's special. I think if he plays, they got a chance to win. I don't think they will win, but I think they can. Um, I, I like what you – I'll take Pitt. I'll go, I'll go against you. 
we'll go ahead and add on that. Okay, okay, I like that. You, I so love I how you talk myself from one thing into another. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, at that's, the end of the day, that's how you know a guy is fifty and sixty, right there, baby. Yes, yes. Uh, I will tell you this: Virginia on defense, their EPA per play margin on defense is number one twenty-two. So they ain't stopping. Oh no, 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 no. Pitt's gonna score whenever they want. I just I've seen Pitt's defense look terrible so many times this year, and I just feel like Virginia will be able to score with them. But that's pending. They've got this one special guy that I think is pretty damn special. I agree with you. I agree. So I'm I'm so, going to roll Virginia plus the fourteen right, and a half, and you're going to roll Pitt minus fourteen and a half. Let's let's jump into the next one here. Four p.m. Eastern time. We have got Louisiana heading to Virginia to face off against Liberty and Mr. Hugh Freeze. Really fascinating coaching matchup. Uh, Liberty, a four and a half point favorite here. Total of 53 and a half. I'm going to let you start us off. I, man, I look at these numbers and I am just, I, I don't, I, I'll, I'll let you start. What, what are your thoughts here? That's a, no, I, I, I like, I, uh, I like Louisiana. I like the right case here. I think they're the better football team. They really are. You know, we, there, there was a time where Liberty was the hot team before the season started. We thought they could have a special year. I've seen enough of them to know this team is good, but they're not special. Not that Louisiana is either, but I'll take them with a head start because I think they can win the game. I kind of think they will win the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at these numbers, and it they these two teams just look so identical, right? I do think that Liberty has no, the, the better... quarterback play on one team is significantly better, but I think Louisiana is better than them a little bit at everything else. Well, that's so. That's what I was getting at. Is that obviously Malik Willis is is an NFL caliber kind of guy. Yeah, he's um, he's the special player. But go ahead. If you, if you just look at all the advanced stats, you know, I I do think Louisiana matches up relatively well with Liberty. Yeah, I do too. So I, I, I think Louisiana is better than them. I I think overall, I I mean, my line on this was Louisiana minus two, and when it came out minus yeah, four and a half the other way, I said, whoa. Like, I'm missing yeah. something. No, I thought this game was going to be real close to a pick em, And if I had to favor one by, by a point or a half point, I would have I would have given it to Louisiana over over, uh, over Liberty. And so when I saw, it wasn't just Liberty minus. It was Liberty minus four and a half. It was Liberty minus more than a field goal. You know, I thought, okay, all right, I, I'm going to take the Cajuns. I, I think they're a better team from top to bottom except for the quarterback position. But it's not like they have just a toad at quarterback. You know, they they can play football. They're really good. I will I will say this, all right, so the coaching matchup thing is kind of interesting because there is the idea that, of course, Hugh Freeze not being mentioned for some of these other jobs, maybe he comes out and he's got some stuff that's set up for him, right? Maybe maybe he's really irritated about this and the team is irritated for him or something. I don't it, – it's something along those lines. And then on the other side, this is not a – this is not a Sunbelt game for Louisiana, if Billy Napier is only really interested in um, in knocking out, like, if he's only interested in handling the Sunbelt stuff and winning a championship that way, then maybe this game doesn't matter. They've got Louisiana Monroe next week. That's a rivalry game. There's a lot that could go into play. Do you really but- think a guy like Billy Napier doesn't care about every game? Like, have you seen anything about him and his coaching style to think that he didn't take every game absolutely serious? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I see where you're coming from. I'm going to take Louisiana plus four and a half. Like, I, I just think yeah, yeah, I, I, it feels like a field goal game. It looks fishy. The only thing that scares me is, is the line looks fishy. Yeah, that's that's the scary part, right? I think they're begging us to take Louisiana, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, I'm just going to fall right in that trap. Let's go. Let's, let's, you know what? I'll fall in there with you. I'm, uh, I'm all over it. Louisiana plus four and a half. Next game on the board, we have got a 4 p.m. Eastern time game. UCLA and Chip Kelly heading across town to face off against USC. USC, a three-point home dog, 65.5 is the total. Jackson Dart is going to get the start this week. Man, I made this line, UCLA minus five. You look at some of the advanced stats here. Look, USC, number 119 in EPA per rush on defense. Like that ain't gonna cut it against UCLA, who is number eleven in that metric on offense. I, I mean, USC's defense is just awful, absolutely awful. Yeah. I think UCLA is gonna probably keep the ball for about forty forty five minutes here, 
and, yep. and not let USC so do too. anything. So I, I'm I'm all over US uh, UCLA here. No, I'm the same way. Now my only fear is 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 USC looked like they quit about three weeks ago. Okay, maybe longer than that. Eh, maybe it was maybe about three weeks ago. They, it looks like they were done playing football. There's a world. There's a world where three weeks ago they said this season is over. Let's just get ready for UCLA. Let's win the battle for LA. And we don't care about anything else. These seniors are going to go out beating UCLA. That that world exists. I don't know that I'm scared of it though. Yeah. I got to see that and just be wrong for for me to think that that's a viable situation. This USC team has quit. I, I think there'll be less than 37 USC fans in the stadium. I mean, it's just that, that nobody's going to be at this game. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Next game on the dock. Oh, we're both taking UCLA minus three there. So I'm uh, yes. I'm all over. Fifty four twenty is the time. Let's let's jump into this next one. Five thirty p.m. Eastern time. Baylor heads to Kansas State, and it's one of those weird off kilter time slot games. A little strange. Baylor coming off the biggest win in program, maybe not maybe not program history, but a massive massive win over Oklahoma last week. Biggest win of Dave Aranda's uh, short coaching career as a head coach, anyway, and. They they end up as a road uh, dog, like they're an underdog to Kansas State. Kansas State is favored by one here, and the total is fifty, which on on its face looks like it could be too many points. But but also think that I mean these two teams can find a way to score on each other. I'm really curious in this spot. You look at at Baylor's offense against Kansas State's defense. Kansas State's defense ain't great. I mean, they are number, let's see, I mean, they're number 10 in defensive success rate. But as far as EPA per pass, number 63, EPA per rush, number 48, like there's holes that you can take advantage of there for Baylor's offense. As far as Baylor's defense, they are number 101 in EPA per pass. Uh, Kansas State number 20 in that metric on offense. Like there are ways for each team to take advantage of the other one. And as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to take Kansas State here. Like I, I think coming off that massive win, you got to go on the road again. And Kansas State has just quietly been beating the piss out of everybody for four weeks. They are just killing people since Skylar Thompson came back. And this is a massive, massive game in Manhattan. I'm, I'm going to ride the Wildcats. Yeah, the problem is, is I don't think they've been beating any good teams at all. That's my only issue. So yeah. you're right. They've been beating a bunch of teams. But those teams are Texas Tech, TCU, Kansas, and West Virginia. Congratulations. That's a hell of a run. I think Baylor is closest to Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and they have L's to all those teams. I think they lose this game. I think Baylor controls the football from start to finish and controls the game from start to finish. I can get down with it. So Baylor plus one for you, Kansas State minus one for me. That moves us over to the SEC, 7 p.m. Eastern time, Auburn, headed over to South Carolina. Auburn will be without Bo Nix. He's out for the rest of uh, at least the regular season, if not longer. And they uh, they will have T.J. Finley as their starting quarterback. They also lost their starting kicker, Anders Carlson. He is out for the rest of the season with a torn ACL. He tore it on an onside kick. What happened to Auburn last week? Uh, we talked about it in the recap on Sunday just uh, that is that is rip your heart out of your chest kind of stuff. When you're up twenty eight to three, you're feeling good, and it wasn't like Mississippi State did anything crazy. They just kept running the same thing and got themselves back in the ball game, and the momentum just took them over the finish line. Auburn could do nothing. Well, they were getting that. stops too. Like yeah. it, it, you, to score forty something an answer point, it, it's not just the scoring forty that's the hard thing. It's the stopping the other team from scoring anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's kind of what puts me in this spot here. You look at advanced numbers and whatnot, uh, you would think you would think that Auburn should be able to handle this ball game. Uh, but no, advanced numbers would tell you that South Carolina has actually been a better football team overall on the season, which is kind of crazy. Advanced stats from from Parker's Bunch over at cfb graphscom has South Carolina favored by one point here? Like, I, I had this as Auburn by four, and that was even before the Bo, uh, the Bo Nicks news, right? So on Saturday night, I go through, I make out my numbers, and I had Auburn by four. They were favored by seven. 
and it's it's up to seven and a half. Uh, you look at the money that's coming in. I thought maybe we got some reverse line movement, something crazy, and no, like there's actual public money on Auburn, and I don't get it. I think South Carolina needs this game to get to a bowl game. I think they're going to be fired up a night game in Columbia, and I'm getting a hook here. Like, give me a break. I'm taking South Carolina all day plus seven and a half. So the only problem that people have with the reason all the money is still coming in on Auburn is simply because South Carolina, while Auburn looked just real bad last week and just looked dead and it was a weird, 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 bad game for them, did you watch the South Carolina-Missouri game? Because it looked like Missouri tried to give South Carolina the game 19 times. You talk about a team that needs this quote-unquote game to make a bowl. Well, yeah, they had a game to make a bowl last week given to them. And they didn't want it. They didn't want anything to do with it. They yeah. played like complete garbage. They they could do not I run. Think they're going to be better this week, man. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think because they're at home, right? That's that's my that's my only hope here. Well, at is, some point in time, look, that Auburn defense isn't great, but they're a hell of a lot better than Missouri's defense. I think. Yeah, you couldn't move the football on them, and you fumbled the ball and threw the ball away a hundred times over and over again. I just think there's a world where they look real sloppy. I don't want to take Auburn. I don't want to lay all those points. God, I feel just like I just don't think I can take South Carolina. I I saw them. Their their chance to get bowl eligible was last week, and it was served up on a silver platter, and they cocked it off. And it just, what do you do? How do you feel sorry for them if they get beat this week and then they get beat next? Like, what do you? I don't don't know. Yeah, you don't feel sorry for them at all. You don't at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna ride South Carolina. I like the home underdog at home on a Saturday night. I like South Carolina. You know how much I love South Carolina. Oh, I yeah. want them to be good. It kind of makes me sick to take Auburn and lay the <laughs> I can understand your side. And that I don't have anything against Auburn. I'd like to see TJ Finley have a great game. That's oh, what yes. I would like. Yes, absolutely. Uh, remember, it, his first game as a starter last year for LSU was actually in a blowout yep. of South Carolina. So that's right. No, that that is true. That is true. Of course, obviously, different South Carolina team. That was a different coach, uh, different coaching staff, different players, etc. So, you know, whole whole different thing. But same uniforms, same uniforms. Uh, another seven thirty p.m. Eastern time game. We have got da 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 Virginia Tech and the recently fired Justin Fuente heading over to Miami to take on the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes are a seven and a half point favorite at home. Total of fifty six here. And brother, I think I think Miami's done. I, I think uh, Virginia Tech, like we we see that dead cat bounce sometimes with teams whose coach was just fired. They tend to play pretty well that first game out. Miami, they have not fired their coach as of yet, and they just came off of an excruciating loss in a rivalry game. Now they got to come back home. Uh, yeah, it's senior night, but it, at Miami, there's going to be what. 15,000 people in the stands, like nothing crazy. I don't think there's any kind of home field atmosphere at all for Miami. I, I think Virginia Tech finds a way to to definitely keep this within the 7.5, but I, I think Virginia Tech could win the game outright. Like I, I think I think that game last week was everything for Miami, and they found a way to lose it, and now it's just it's done. So I'm, I'm all in on Virginia Tech being able to cover this week. So we're going to see this one very similar. It's just simply, I don't know that Miami is good enough to beat anybody by by more than a touchdown right now. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're not wrong about that. You are not wrong. They hadn't beaten anybody by more than a touchdown. Is it all season? I got, you know what? I really want to look up their schedule right quick while we're on this one because uh, we we got a few minutes. Let's see, Virginia Tech and Miami. All right, have they beaten anybody by? Uh, okay, so Central Connecticut State, they beat 69 to nothing, but they beat, let's see, App State by That's two. It. They beat NC That's State it. by one, Pitt by four, Georgia Tech by three. Yeah, That's this it. is, are they, are they baiting us with this line? Does this line No, stick? I think, I think there's a, no, because I think there's a world where everybody just assumes, most people assume once you lose your coach, your team is done. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're both we're both riding Virginia Tech here. All right, yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, Vitek plus seven and a half for both of us. Last game on the board. Let's go ahead and knock it out here. Cal headed to Stanford. Stanford, a one and a half point underdog at home. Total of forty five, 
And news about Tanner McKee. Looks like he was practicing this week. He will likely be back for this game. The line was actually Cal minus three, and it has been bet down to one and a half because of that, uh, because of the Tanner McKee news. But look, Tanner McKee hadn't played in a month. And obviously, this is a massive, massive rivalry game. This is uh, what the big game, I believe, is what they call it. Y- you look at this, I just don't see a lot of, of favorable matchups here for Stanford. Uh, I tend to believe that Cal is just the the better football team. I, as a matter of fact, like I, my numbers had Cal favored by a touchdown, even on the road here. I just I, I think that Cal is a way better team. They got their players back now. Everything looks okay for them. I, I'm I'm going to take the Bears and Justin Wilcox to be able to get this win pretty easily because this is, I, I mean it's it, it's nuts to think about the fact that this line has jumped as much as it has. And I, brother, I told you three, and now I'm looking. I think the opening line was actually. Was it Cal minus five, and it moved that much? Do you remember? From- I have no idea what the opening line. I don't. I don't know what the opening line was. I didn't talk about this as the opening line game. This was. Uh, let's see. I'm. I'm looking. Da, da, da. Let's see. Cal opening line was. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Opening line was five, and it has moved that much. Three and a half points just because of Tanner McKee. I don't buy that. I, I don't think, know that it moved three and a half because of Tanner McKee. I think this is more of a realistic line. I don't think Cal's very good. Like, you keep talking Cal's a much better team, much better. Look, you're a three-win team, too, in the same shitty conference, all right? They ain't much better than anybody. So, <laughs> if this line was five, wrong. I would seriously be taking uh, Stanford. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, just... I think the line is right here. I think even, this is where the line should be because it's two shit teams. Even with Tanner McKee coming back, Cal's defense, like the one thing that they do the absolute best is stop the pass. They are number eight in defensive pass uh, success rate, and they are number seven in EPA per pass on defense. I just, I don't, I'm going to roll Cal. Like I, I love Cal in the spot. I think they're a, I think they're a way better football team. Uh, they're they're both bad football teams, but there are different levels of bad, just the same way as there are different levels of good, right? So I'll uh, I'll take Cal big time here. Is that is that the way you're rolling? Well, I'm going to take Cal, but once again, this is one of those where you numbers folks lie all the time, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are number eight in pass defense. That's because nobody has to pass on them because That's you just run true. the football down the throat. You get a lead on them, and their offense isn't good enough to scare you. So you just run the ball. That's a, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, a couple of years ago when Rutgers was like 128th in the country overall, they're one of the worst teams in football, they had the number three pass defense in all the Big Ten. Well, why is that? Because nobody threw on them. Because people beat them 40 to nothing by just running the ball down the throat. Yeah. Yeah, you're not this, wrong. This is where numbers lie, and you got to be careful of that. With that said, I will take Cal because I trust Wilcox, but either one of them, are both bad, bad teams. I These can are bad down. football teams. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, brother. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and let you go. I will wrap this show up, and uh, we will talk again very soon. Yes, sir. See you, man. All right. Be good, buddy. All right. That is going to wrap up the show. Make sure and tune in for the Sunday reaction show to all of the action that went on, of course, over the college football weekend. We'll uh, we'll break it all down. We'll see exactly what we're looking at heading into Rivalry Weekend for Thanksgiving week. Uh, lots, lots to figure out next week. So, Chris, I believe, will be on vacation next week, so I will be handling the show solo next week, whichever day we end up releasing them. But we'll, we'll figure it all out. We'll see what's going down next week. With that said, go to BetUS and make sure and sign up using the promo code NCAAF2021. It's going to get you 125% sign-up bonus And it is Sportsbook exclusive. There's a link in the description. Go ahead and take advantage of that while you can. You click that link, it's going to toss the promo code in there for you. So go ahead and check it out. You can find me on the BetUS College Football Show next week. We are doing one show, live show, on Wednesday. It's going to be a little earlier than usual. So go ahead and make sure and subscribe over there. Hit that notification bell. It's going to let you know when we go live. Same thing with Winning Cures Everything. 
Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Make sure and like the video, share it out, jump into the comments, all that good stuff. We want to hear from you again. Congrats to Northern Illinois. You guys are a lot of fun. I appreciate all of you being in my mentions for being so very wrong about Coach Thomas Hammock and the Huskies this season. I've had fun with you guys. So you can follow us both on Twitter. Uh, Chris is at Chris B. Giannini. I am at Gary WCE. With that said, you guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully, hopefully, all of you tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.